This is the Toyota Kluger, and it's one of Australia's favourite large SUVs. But earlier this year, Toyota made a change, and it might just have put you off a little bit. My name is Daniel Gardner, and you're watching Chasing Cars, and today I'm going to show you all of the differences for the 2023 Toyota Kluger, and if those changes should make you take a closer look, or run a mile. If you've liked this video, you know what to do. Hit like and subscribe, and maybe even consider hitting the bell icon, so that every time another awesome review like this goes live, you'll get notified. Let's start with the exterior changes on the 2023 Toyota Kluger. Right, well that concludes the exterior changes because absolutely nothing has changed. Let's look at the boot. Now this is the mid-range GXL, which means it gets a power-operated tailgate. Now I don't know if you can hear this, but the entire time this tailgate is operating, it makes that annoying beeping sound and it'll do it the whole time it's closing as well. Not sure I need to be told it's opening and closing. I can see it, not a big fan of that feature, but what I am a big fan of is the space you get once you're into it. 241 litres with the third row of seats in place, which is respectable for a large SUV. But fold those seats down and you get about 550 litres. Fold the second row and you get about 1150 litres. So the boot on this thing is massive. You also get extra space under here for skinny items, but I particularly like this because it gives you somewhere to stow the luggage blind so it doesn't rattle around in the boot when you're not using it. Another little cubby over here for little small bits and pieces and I love Toyota for giving us a full-size spare wheel underneath. Now, one thing this particular version doesn't have is a 12-volt power socket in the boot, so if you've got a fridge in there, your beers are going warm. Getting into the third row of seating is actually very easy, thanks to these huge doors and lots of space from the rolling second row. But once you're back here, there is precious little space and precious few creature comforts. Now, that front seat is definitely not in a position which would be comfortable for people to sit in, which means I have plenty of room at the moment. But there's very little under thigh support, fairly typical of a third row and a seven seat SUV, and headroom is minimal, at best adequate. I do have a couple of cup holders back here and some air vents on the ceiling, but there's no power points back here, which means if you put children back here, when their devices go flat, they'll be screaming at you at the front. It could not be a more different story in the second row though. This seat is positioned for maximum comfort in the second row, so right back in the third row, it would be a very unpleasant place to be, but I can adjust for leg room up front. I've got heaps of tow room underneath the seat, loads of lovely under thigh support for taller passengers like me. I've even got adjustment for the backrest, so it's the proper limousine style comfort experience in here. I've also got tinted glass on the windows and I've got two USB-C power points down here, even get my own climate control panel and interior lighting is probably one of my only criticisms. Incandescent bulbs up there rather than LED, which is far more commonplace. Also, Toyota calls this synthetic leather. I'm going to call it fake. A little bit sticky and perhaps not the high quality feel they're going for. Otherwise, the second row of the Kluger would be a very pleasant place to spend some time. Space is what the Kluger is all about in the front row as well. And as soon as I get in here, there is a lovely sense of space and volume. Tons of shoulder room. I've also got abundant headroom for a taller driver like me, loads of legroom. The driving position is excellent and the view of surroundings is excellent too. Despite this rather chunky A pillar, I still got a great view out from here. And storage in the cabin is excellent also, starting with this huge, deep and cavernous little cubby in the middle with a removable drawer, lots of versatile. Oh, and there's a 12 volt power socket in there as well. Somewhat makes up for the lack of one in the boot. A couple of cup holders there, big bottle holders in the door. I've got more storage down here in the center console, no cordless charging at this stage, but I do have two USB-C power points and one USB-A if you want to feel like you're living in the 2000s still. And there's a 12 volt power socket, so plenty of options up here. And another feature I particularly like are these little shelves built into the dashboard for keeping your mobile phone. If you do choose to keep a device in there, there's even a little hole to take cables through for those aforementioned charge sockets. So a really well thought out interior. In terms of materials, actually very good too. All the touch points, with the exception of a couple of hard plastics, are really very good, but perhaps one criticism would have to be it's just ever so slightly plain in here, dare I say dull, especially when you compare it to some of the South Korean contenders. It doesn't feel like there's a lot of work gone in design. It is very functional, very typically Toyota, you might add, and that's if that's what you're after, then so be it. Now, so far, all the things I've mentioned are things you could get with this car when it launched in 2021. So let's talk about the thing that is new. That. Instead of an 8-inch screen in the previous mid-range GXL, you now get a 12.3-inch touchscreen, and it has made all the difference to this cabin. The resolution for a start is absolutely lovely. They haven't gone too over the top with the graphics and the kind of design of it. It's very utilitarian, very sensible, but it just works so nicely. It's very fast in operation. 
getting through all the different menus is really, really simple. It's, it's actually more intuitive than I was expecting. And as I said before, there's no annoying features buried in submenus. All the stuff you need right there and then is easy to get to. And there are various different submenus exactly where you'd expect to find them. So that is a huge step up for the cabin of this car and just general function and day-to-day -day usability. One of the things you get with that is 12 months subscription to Toyota Connected Services, which allows you to do things involving the Toyota smartphone application, such as finding out how much fuel you've got left in the car without being anywhere near the car uh, and finding out where the vehicle is. Now, that might sound like a strange thing, but I once lost a Fiat Fremont in IKEA car park, so I would have really appreciated that feature then. I don't have a full digital driver's instrument cluster. For that, you have to step up to the Grande, but in this version, you do get a seven inch digital screen nestled between two conventional analog dials. So we're getting there. The other big news with this vehicle is under the bonnet, but to tell you about that, I have to take it for a drive. If you're a fan of the hybrid Kluger, then don't worry because that transmission continues on unchanged as before. The big news is with the purely petrol powered version. Previously, it was a three and a half litre V6, but now it's a four cylinder. Ooh, controversial. Not really, because it's turbocharged, which means power is now 198 kilowatts and torque is 420 newton meters. Now, the astute ones among you will realize that that is 20 kilowatts down on power, but the even more astute ones will notice it's up on torque by 70 newton meters. And that, frankly, is where it makes all difference for a car like this. For what it's worth, I rather liked the previous V6 engine. It was smooth and pretty easy to live with, relatively efficient for what it was, and even sounded quite nice as well. But the four-cylinder does all those things pretty well as well. It's much smoother than I was expecting. It's fairly sophisticated, and when you get stuck into it, it actually sounds quite nice as well. It's a little bit thrashy when you rev it out, but that's the key thing with this engine. You don't have to. Peak torque comes in lower than the V6 at just 1700 RPM and lasts all the way through to 3000 RPM. So this car for doing hard working duties is far more versatile. And it's a little bit more efficient as well. At 8.3 litres per 100 kilometres, Toyota claims, it's 0.4 of a litre per 100 kilometres more efficient. As before, the hybrid gets a CVT, but this gets the pick of the transmissions, an eight speed automatic torque converter type transmission. In operation, I actually rather like it. You can catch it out occasionally, such at low speed when you dive into the throttle, it just doesn't know what it's doing. But for just normal smooth driving, it works very nicely. It's a really good pairing with that upgraded engine. And as for the rest of the Kluger package, well, I'm pleased to say not a lot has changed. This car was liked because it's very stoic in its manner. It just does what it's asked without really complaining too much. The ride on virtually all roads is very acceptable. It's quiet enough, perhaps not the best NVH in the segment, but acceptable. I mean, the Kluger has always been an exercise in adequacy and it continues to do that, even with its new engine. However, it is a little bit more expensive. The range is pretty much as it was before. There's an entry level GX, which starts at about $50,000. There's the GXL, this one, which starts from just over 60,000. And then there's the Grande at the top of the pile which is just over $71,000. They all start as front wheel drive, but you can have all wheel drive for an extra $4,000. And it's two and a half thousand dollars to go up to the hybrid, which is all wheel drive across the board. Prices therefore have increased by between 2,000 and two and a half thousand dollars, regardless of which variant you go for. The Kluger therefore is more expensive across the board. So is it worth it? Well, I'm glad you asked because I've done the maths. Assuming you drive about 15,000 kilometers a year, driving the turbo petrol over the V6 petrol saves you about 0.4 of a litre per 100 kilometers. That's about 60 litres in a year. Assuming $1.85 at the pump for 91 Ron, that'll save you about $111 over the course of the year. Which means, to make up the difference between the price of the old car and this one, you need to drive about 18 years in it. Is it worth the cash? Well, it's not really about the cash saving or the fuel efficiency. It's about application and suitability of this engine to the car. This car with its lower down torque and more of it makes far more sense for a big SUV that's going to be doing hard working duties. And when you throw into the bargain that lovely new technology and the big screen, this car does still make an awful lot of sense. The Toyota Kluger has always been one of those cars that might be a little bit difficult to get passionate or particularly sentimental about, but with the passing of the V6, I honestly feel like it's the end of somewhat of an era. 
However, as cars like this become more efficient without sacrificing performance or practicality, it feels like the start of a much better era, albeit a slightly more expensive era.